The story you're about to hear is true, but... Uh, beastly hot, eh, nurse? Yes, it is, Colonel. Uh, how is the patient, Captain Robinson? He keeps calling for his mother. His mother? Well, I never met the lady, but she'd be half a world away. Back in England, not here in India... Nurse, we're three days' march from the nearest railway station. If we can get Captain Robinson there... He won't last that far, Colonel. And he's in pain, terrible pain. Mm, nothing you can do? Nothing. Just keep going. Hope that he dies peacefully. It'll be a miracle if he does. Strange. True stories of the supernatural... With your narrator, famous author, lecturer, and expert on strange and weird events, Walter Gibson. Thank you, Charles Wood. Fifty years ago, India was a British colony, and the men who ruled it were the men of the British colonial army. One of them was a young captain named Robinson. The regiment had gone out into the back country on a punitive expedition against a fierce native tribe. While marching down a narrow walla, the column came under attack. considering they caught us by surprise. We've got two dead and... Oh, poor Robinson there. Yes, poor fellow. Wounded badly, very badly. And all right, patch him up and have the natives carry him in a dooley. There's no doctor about, but I hear there's a nurse at Krishiva Mission. Captain Robinson was in a very bad way. And the emergency treatment, plus the rigors of the homeward march, brought on complications. By the time he opened his eyes at Kroshiva Mission, he was a very sick man indeed. Bells, remind me of... Of what, Captain Robinson? Oh, you're, you're a nurse? You mustn't talk too much. You've a long trip ahead of you. Trip? To the railway. Five days' march at least. Last I remember is those bloody natives. Oh, oh I say, I, I do ask your pardon. For what? Well, <laughs> that word. Oh, I'm used to it. Yes, I, I suppose out here one does get used to the word bloody. Used all the time. But back home, it's, it's the worst of swear words. My mother was... Ben? Yes. For a moment, I, I thought I was home. But they're not like those at home. They're quite different, really. What's your name? Janice. Janice. That's a lovely name. You know, you remind me of my mother. Oh, no. Yes. <laughs> I know it, it does sound silly, doesn't it? But, of course, <laughs> you're much younger. You must rest now. But I feel fine. Outside of that wound in my <laughs> chest, I... <laughs> Captain... <laughs> I feel so hot. I, I... Here. <coughs> oh, you've picked up fever, Captain. Fever? Yes. Oh, you must rest. <coughs> Long trip ahead of you. You must rest. You know, you do look like her. He's in bad shape, Colonel. Mm. The railway's a long way off. Shall we leave him here? Oh, no, you can't. Well, why not? There are no drugs here. He needs drugs. He must have them. He's got to go with you. I see. And, Colonel. Yes? May I come along? I want to do what I can to help him. Let me come along. <laughs> Thank you. 
The next morning, the column started. The heat beat down on the sick man, swaying in the dooley. There were flies and gnats, and despite all that the nurse could do, Captain Robinson sank slowly. Uh, beastly hot, eh, nurse? Yes, it is, Colonel. How is the patient, Captain Robinson? He keeps calling for his mother. His mother? Well, I never met the lady, but she'd be half a world away. Back in England, not out here in India. Nurse, we're three days' march from the nearest railway station. If we can get Captain Robinson there... He won't last that far, Colonel. And he's in pain, terrible pain. Mm, nothing you can do? Nothing. Just keep going. Hope that he dies peacefully. It'll be a miracle if he does. But I'd say you've done miracles so far. Oh, I've done what I could. You're always with him. That's why I came along, Colonel. Nurse, um, I, I, I know it's none of my ruddy business, but... Um, yes, Colonel. Are you in love with him? Yes. Yes, I'm afraid I am. Another day's march, and by the time the column made night camp, the nurse knew that Captain Robinson would never last through the night. For a while, she was alone with him in the tent that had been put up to shelter him. Mother! 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 Captain, please. Land and breaches. Here, let Falling me... Falling to her mother. Let mother. me bathe your forehead. <laughs> please don't go on that way. Mother. Please look at me. Please. Oh. oh, I can't. I can't stand it, Colonel. Here, here, now, now, nurse. You're worn out. He's so thin, so delirious. No, 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 no. And there's nothing I can do for him. Nothing. I feel so useless. Oh, you haven't slept since we left Kishima. Oh, how can I sleep? He's going to die. He is, eh? He lies there and moans. He's delirious. No, 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 my girl. Here, here, here. You're trembling. Go over to the commissary. Have some tea. I'll go inside and keep an eye on your patient till you return. Colonel Brown waited a moment, then entered the tent. To his surprise, Captain Robinson was no longer delirious. He lay quiet, almost asleep. And there was a further surprise for the colonel. He's not in pain, you know. Hey, what? A, a woman? Ma madam, where did you come from? I came to see him. But we're in the middle of nowhere. I know for a positive fact there's no female here but the nurse. I'm here, am I not? Oh, he's been so sick, the poor child. And the way you're dressed, madam, as if you were out for a stroll along the Thames. I think I'll go now. He, he is better, isn't he? Better? In a way, yes. In a way? Yes. Goodbye, Colonel. Goodbye, madam. I say, I say, madam. Madam, I, I, miss. I, she's gone. <laughs> but I tell you, nurse, it's impossible. Colonel, are you sure? Could I not, Betty? She was in the tent, I tell you, as close to me as, as I am to you. And then she left, and, and suddenly I wondered where she'd come from. There's no other woman within a hundred miles. There are native women. I'm not talking about native women. A woman like you, British. Oh. No, I said it, it, it's beyond me. I said a dozen men out combing the brush, no trace of her. Oh, I say, by the way, how's the captain? He's dead. What? A few minutes ago, while you were out searching. Oh, a pity. No. He died so peacefully. Did, eh? Yes. Well, that woman did calm him down somehow. So peacefully, quietly. Oh, here, Colonel. Yeah? What's this? His sword and watch. 
He asked that they be taken to his mother in England. He asked? Yes. He opened his eyes for a moment just before he... he died. He asked me especially. And... Yes? Just before he died, he called me... he called me Janice. Captain Robinson was buried in India, where he had died. The nurse returned to Kushiva Mission. It was not until six months later that the sword and the watch were brought to the captain's mother in England. Colonel Brown took them himself, returning to England and then to an old house just outside of London. He was announced, and then he met her, Captain Robinson's mother. How do you do, Colonel Brown? You... You're Mrs. Robinson? Why do you stare at me? What is, you were there, in, in the tent. What? You were. You're the woman I saw the, the, the night your son died. The night my son... Oh, I did have a vision, Colonel. A vision, madam? Right here at home. I saw him clearly. He was sick, delirious. In a tent. Yes? He lay on a cot. He looked up at me. He died that night, didn't he? At ten o'clock? Yes. Exactly at ten. And he wanted me to have his sword and his watch. You know that? But, but how can you? How? I know more than that, Colonel. His sword you may leave here. But the watch... Yes? I want it sent to the nurse. The nurse? Oh, yes. He told me about her, too. I want her to have his watch. Her name is Janice. vision so strange and powerful that while she saw her son dying thousands of miles away, Colonel Brown saw her and talked to her at the very spot she dreamed of. A true story authenticated in the records of the famous British journalist, William T. Stead. I'll bring you another story of the supernatural. A story true, but strange. Tune in at this same time for Walter Gibson, your expert on the supernatural. Stories of ghosts, of spirits, werewolves, and voodoo. And each story you hear is true, but... Strange. Strange with Walter Gibson as your expert was directed by Joe Graham. In the cast were Grace Keddy and Court Benson. Strange has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.